now we've won. It's time to come back. They're getting ready. You're going to see them soon. These are great American heroes. These are great heroes of the world because they fought for us, but they've killed ISIS who hurts the world. And we're proud to have done it. And I'll tell you, they're up there looking down on us. And there is nobody happier or more proud of their families to put them in a position where they've done such good for so many people. So our boys, our young women, our men, they're all coming back and they're coming back now. We won and that's the way we want it and that's the way they want it. President Trump in the Rose Garden after de defending the decision to pull all U.S. troops out of Syria on the ground, uh, talking there about heroes, servicemen and women. There weren't young men, w women obviously on the front lines there um, who have died. I'm assuming that means fighting ISIS broadly uh, because there have not been um, too many casualties on the ground in Syria. Uh, at least that we know about. Let me bring in our panel. We'll start there. Charles Hurt, opinion editor for The Washington Times. Susan Page, Washington Bureau Chief at USA Today and Washington Post columnist Mark Thiessen. Okay, first of all, broadly, not dissecting this, this uh, video from the Rose Garden that just came out. Broadly, Charlie, this policy is getting a lot of pushback from the Pentagon, from allies. Uh, from others, but it is something the president has said he wanted to do for some time. Well, it's certainly getting uh, a lot of pushback around here in Washington. Um, I think a lot of that has to do with the fact that uh, the president has talked about uh, the dangers of broadcasting to the enemy, uh, our, our intentions to make moves on the battlefield, and uh, this is kind of the alternative of that. And it is uh, uh, certainly messier than uh, predicting it uh, down the line. But the, the bottom line remains, uh, this is the president uh, who won an election promising to uh, curtail military engagement, involvement overseas, and we can have all kinds of debates about whether that's a smart thing to do or not, uh, but uh, this is the president keeping that promise of, uh, of reining, reining those things in. And while a lot of people around here are obviously very upset about it, and a lot of people uh, can make some very good arguments about needing to continue the fight against ISIS, um, I, I don't think beyond you know, the, the, the uh, beltway here, people are, gonna, are nearly as, as worked up about it out in the rest of America. Well, yet, you know, I mean, this is what happened with Mission Accomplished for President Bush, too. I mean, there was a, a sense that, okay, it's done. Uh, but it wasn't done. And here's uh, war against ISIS by the numbers. 2,000 troops in Syria, about 5,000 stationed in Iraq. Uh, recent reports from the Pentagon believed to be about 30,000 current and former ISIS members still present in the Syria and Iraq area. Uh, so far, $23 billion, it's military operations that we've spent in Syria and Iraq. And the question is, if, if these lawmakers are right, uh, Susan, is how much this affects that effort on the ground. Yeah. How it affects other places, how it affects Syrian Kurds. Uh, what the, how does it embolden Russia? Uh, does it good news for Iran? Uh, does it really re reduce U.S. influence in that whole region? And you know, Charles is certainly right that this is something that President Trump has said from the days of the campaign that he wanted to do, but he did not apparently give a heads up to his Secretary of State for one, Secretary of Defense for another, not to mention Republicans on on Capitol Hill that this was this was coming. So that is a Messy might be one word, but it, it means that you don't have the kind of discussion about whether this is the wise thing to do, how do you go about doing it, and do you claim victory, which is a very dangerous thing to do against a foe like ISIS. I know where you're going to go, but fight from the <laughs> other side. What's the positive? Is there a positive at all? Well, the positive is that we've that Donald Trump has removed the Islamic State's physical caliphate. Just last week, they knocked out the final town where they were living in. And so, but, but the problem with that is, is what ISIS has now done is ISIS has reverted into an insurgency, and it has, as you showed on those stats, uh, thousands of troops that uh, that can uh, go out and cause all sorts of mayhem. And also, ISIS is not the only terrorist organization in Syria. Al Qaeda, which is more dangerous than ISIS, according to our intelligence community, has a safe haven there. Um, so. You know, he, he, President Trump deserves great credit 
for the military ac accomplishments against ISIS, but and while he did campaign Charlie against uh, for pulling out of, of a lot of these countries, he also campaigned against Barack Obama's precipitous decision to pull out of Iraq in 2011, saying that it was a, a disaster that we shouldn't have been there to begin with. But once we were there, we had to stay and win. And that he he called him the founder of ISIS for allowing ISIS to to rise up. And since it, because of Obama's decision, ISIS carried out 143 attacks in 29 countries that killed more than 2,000 people and injured tens of thousands more. Um, and so having campaigned against that, having pledged, having then redefeated ISIS, why would he make the same mistake that Barack Obama made uh, by, by pulling all of our troops out, taking our boot off the terrorist neck and allowing them and Al Qaeda to have a safe haven uh, in Syria? It makes no sense. 67 U.S. service members have died fighting ISIS broadly uh, in a number of different countries, uh, not specifically uh, from Syria. Uh, the Russia statement about this decision uh, came out. A milestone story which might evolve from this decision is a real prospect for a political solution. Hope emerges that this location on the Syrian map will follow the example of Aleppo and other Syrian towns and villages which begin getting back to peaceful life. Once Americans were there, there was no such hope. There was also no such hope, really, of uh, protecting those Syrian Kurds who people like President Erdogan really would like to get rid of as a possible threat. Yeah, and, and without a doubt, you know, if a result of this is that you do see a uh, recurrence of uh, of, I, of ISIS, and you start seeing these attacks, I think that, uh, as you point out, I think that uh, you, you will see public, public opinion shift, and probably shift very dramatically um, uh, on this. But uh, in terms of, you know, the broad uh, policy that the president has sort of uh, put forward about not being the, the, world, the, glo the, the world's policeman, is a very that, that was I would argue that's one of the three main reasons he got elected in the first place, and uh, and and what we're seeing here is is you know keeping that 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 promise, and we'll have to see you know what happens on the ground, Susan. You know when President Bush forty one uh, didn't go all the way to Baghdad and kind of pulled out, there was a sort of an ethnic cleansing in Iraq of of some of those uh, folks who were fighting. You wonder if that's going to happen here. You know, and also I think it probably is politically popular. I think Americans uh, have a hard time understanding why we spend so much money, so much uh, blood and treasure in places like Syria. But there are larger calculations that have led other presidents to say this is the kind of mission the United States must do for, for broader interest. Well, so you ha I, I, it's not that I think there's going to be a lot of political blowback for the president. I think there are Democrats who think, great, our, our soldiers are coming home. We're going to spend time here in an effort here in the United States, not in a place like called Syria where I've never been. Uh, but that doesn't mean it's the wise thing to do. Time's going to tell us about that. All right. Meantime, uh, it looks like we're heading into another continuing resolution without funding for the border wall, and that is not sitting well with people like Rush Limbaugh. It's a textbook example of what the drive-by media calls compromise. Trump gets nothing, and the Democrats get everything, including control of the House, in a few short weeks. In fact... I just alluded to this, Trump is going to get less than nothing because this compromise strips out the $1.6 billion for the wall that the Senate Appropriations Committee had already approved weeks ago. That's gone, too. So, fallout from this. To use a Syria analogy, he drew a red line and didn't enforce it. <laughs> and so, that's the worst of all worlds. Now, you, might, you should argue in this case that he probably shouldn't have drawn the red line because he couldn't enforce it because he didn't have the votes and it wasn't going to happen. Uh, so what's happened is, is he's weakened himself. Uh, I mean, he had to do it because we have to keep the government funding because it would be an absolute catastrophe uh, if we had this shutdown scenario uh, with people going into Christmas and all the rest. Obviously, but, there are people who, but, who, who disagree with that. Yeah. But um, what he's done is he's weakened himself going into the negotiations next year with Pelosi and Schumer in the Democratic Congress because, look, the wall is the leverage that the Democrats have. To, if, they, if they choose to use it, they can get a lot 
of their agenda through in exchange for the wall. Donald Trump wants the wall. They could get DACA. They could get 11 million illegal immigrants uh, uh, getting legal status. They almost status. had it. They, they almost had the deal. Democrats walked away from it because they wanted the yeah. issue. Or they can. Or they can do. Well, that's the that's the, because the question: Do they want the issue, or do they want? Do they want? Are they still? Are the Democrats still the resistance, or are they now a governing majority now that they control the House? If they want to be a governing majority, they have to use the leverage they have, and they can do it not just for DACA and for illegal immigration. They could do it for get us. He'd probably go along with Medicaid, Medicare for all. Uh, he'd go along with all sorts of stuff. <laughs> Negotiations to come quickly, Charlie. <laughs> you know, if, if Americans don't care about Syria, they do care about this. Uh, this is a, a tangible loss. Uh, and uh, the fact that you have uh, Democrats sort of, and you asked uh, Senator Klobuchar about this earlier, about well, what if we called it uh, a fence instead of a wall? You know, the fact that you have Democrats sort of playing this, this word game, I think the bottom line is they do want to keep it as an issue. They view it as, as a very good issue for them in the election, not just in terms of bargaining. Got to run. Panel, thank you.